Loftwork. We are a creative agency based in Tokyo, and our staff members is about 100 people right now. And we manage roughly over 500 projects every year. So it may sound Loftwork is big, but actually, let me introduce how we started. We started in a small studio, and as you see, this is 2001 in July. And we made desk, and we bought chair, and this is Mitsu, 15 years younger than now. <laughs> Our space was really small, so we used the, the, the attic as a computer desk. We started Loftwork in 2000, it's 15 years ago, so internet was still... Uh, we, we didn't have a high-speed internet access, so, but we wanted to develop a creator's online platform, and our first project was find a good designer for our tax accountant. <laughs> that was the first project. And, but gradually, we grow our creators network, and now it has grown with registered creators of 20,000 uh, designers in the world. So now, we more focus on design, but it's not just a card design, but design for innovation, including product, service, space, and business. But the core concept is the same. We believe the power of creators. So we don't have designers in Loftwork, but we collaborate designers outside of uh, my company because Loftwork is designed for designers and creators. So we always collaborate the independent, uh, like, the designers around us. So um, what we do is always co-design with partners. For example, uh, we design digital, digital interface with designers, and especially this is for Android, because the creative people love iPhone, but we wanted to empower the users of Android. And let's plug the user of Android. This is the concept of this uh, interface. We also design the product and also business. This, is, this product is released this spring. It's a, the camera, but open platform camera. And we provide, the Olympus provided the 3D data for designers to make own accessories around the camera. And also provide uh, SDK for engineer to, to develop the own application based on this camera. So we supported uh, the Olympus from developing the product concept to making a community activities. So please see this video, like how we design the community and make a new networked product. Um, I believe in the 20th century, the manufacturer designed the product, but now Manufacturers will, uh, is providing the product, but the users and designers will develop the new potential or new ways to use such products. So we are entering the new era. It is based on open collaboration and co-design. And now we also love to design space recently, and this is the latest case. It's a named COIL, Kashiwanoha, it's uh, the area's name, Kashiwanoha Open Innovation Lab. That is uh, the concept of this space. And we design the fabrication space and co-working space, event space 
for and to connect the universities and the government institutions and designers and engineers. So how we design uh, this space? This is uh, the first proposal we submitted to the client. We did a research about the most successful innovation center, that is CIC, Cambridge Innovation Center in Boston. It is uh, one of the most successful collaboration space. Uh, so we figure out the, how they design the space for open innovation or office space or uh, food. And then we define the key elements for open innovation. And in this case, we picked up the five keyword for the space. That is serendipity, diversity, flexibility, prototyping, and open. That's five keywords. And then we proposed the zoning, but we put the serendipity of the space is the most important element for open innovation. That's why we design the yellow zoning is public space. Let everyone go in. And we put the wide open space in the, the, the lab. And we planned unexpected meet, uh, encounter, like, oh, hi, what are you doing? If we uh, plan the, the public space as long as possible, unexpected uh, meetup will happen. That is a core concept of this floor. And this is a presentation space. And this is prototyping space. And we design all this space as a transparent, like, because we need to see what people are doing and who are there. That's why the, the wall of this space is the glass. And this space is, um, we use the fabric and flexible to open the space, sometimes close the space. And there is so many things we install the small elements. So if you are interested in, I'm happy to explain how we design. But the height of table is different, and the fabric we use is different. How to install the diversity in the space, we also uh, pay a lot of attention to that. And also we figure out the key functions, which uh, promote the communication instead of um, statistics uh, situation. Uh, and then install the cafe in the space, that kind of things, yeah. And this is a picture for uh, when we did the hackathon between China and Japan. So this is connected to the, the Chinese institution. And then we did a hackathon together and did the award. And, you know, all these furniture are prototyped here. So it, we didn't buy the furniture, but we made it. And even a whiteboard, we designed it and put the Leo to be flexible. That's how we put the five elements in the space. And this space won the, the best award for the space design this year. And why we can manage about you know, 500 projects every year is we put focus on project management knowledge. So we, all of our staff had, have training for project management based, based on PIMBOK. It's a global project management knowledge. And there is, we wrote a book about our creative project management, and that book is now available for free under the Creative Commons license. We just released it last Friday, so two days ago, and it's only written, it's, we only have Japanese version, but I asked Tim to translate this document, or maybe the, the people here who is interested in, Please translate into 
into Chinese, and we are happy to sh to share this document with you guys. But this is a basic knowledge for designers to execute the big project because design and internet is becoming the the center of uh, innovation, and we need to manage big or complicated project more and more. So we need a very reliable knowledge. That is a pin book, I believe. I believe she's a better presenter than I. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is kind of lost work in the past. And from now, I want to, ex to introduce what we want to do now or in the future. So our new challenge is how to bridge the online activities and offline that is now happening at Fab Cafe, our new uh, cafe with digital fabrication tools. So we put lots of uh, new technologies there, including laser cutters, 3D printers, and UV printers, and digital sewing machines because we believe such tool will empower designers to design new way of making products, a new way of distributing your uh, products, or design the new business model beyond the geographic you know, uh, distance. Because we can send the data, and then the local partner will, can print out your products. So Fab Cafe is the, the experiment space for designers, but we also trying to connect creative people and big enterprise or latest technologies. So that's why we invite um, our clients, including like sensor companies or uh, like camera companies or robot companies and bring such technologies and allow designers and engineers to customize or use new products in the cafe. And this is one example of our collaboration. So at Fab Cafe Tokyo, Robot is welcoming you. <laughs> and every day, very diverse people visit Fab Cafe, sometimes couple for their own you know, work and designers come to here and laser cut on computer, or sometimes design on food, or scan himself and make uh, like 3D printed figures. But what we want to do is to find the new potential with such machines. So I want to introduce three examples. This is 360 degree book because usually the book is written with text, but we invented the book without text. It shows how the story itself and as an object. Or how about posters? We designed these posters without any color, but we use the, we etch the the paper and compile three papers to, to, I don't know, as a design. So we have more opportunities to express the, the new design with such machines. So this is a small example, but I hope like everyone has a opportunity to invent the new way of expressions. And this is a flower, traditional Japanese flower arrangement, but the flower is 3D printed for the dead trees. So it is a collaboration between, between Israeli artist and Japanese traditional flower master. And this is a artist work and 3D printed. It looks like a tasty ice but it's not, it's for the house for Helmut Kraft. So this is uh, the house in New York here. 
And of course, you can make a 101 Taiwan house for Hermit Crab. So this is like this kind of experiments are happening every day. And that is how we design the future. Instead of waiting how the future will be, we invent it. That is the concept of Fab Cafe. And the network is growing globally. And last month, Fab Cafe in Toulouse opened. And this month, the second Fab Cafe will be opening in Hida. And we expect in Singapore, maybe. But the second Fab Cafe is in Taiwan. So please visit uh, Fab Cafe in so uh, Huasan Creative Park. And our another challenge is more like social design. There is a Hida, that this city, the village kind of, the village is five hours away from Tokyo. But there, actually there is lots of visitors from Taiwan because Taiwan people knows about Japan very well. And <laughs> you find out where is a good places to visit. Not only, you know, Tokyo, Kyoto, that's too popular, but many people, uh, many Taiwanese people come to Hida. And, and in this village, our project is now happening. It's a very beautiful traditional Japanese uh, scenery. This is like this. And the, why we started our project here, it go, because this city is covered by uh, forest. Like 90% of the land is covered by broadleaf forest. So we have a big uh, issue in Japan about the forest. Because after the World War II, there was a rush of construction and people cut down the trees a lot. So the government promoted to plant the trees for the future. That was taken in 1955 because the ratio of self-sufficiency of lumber was really high. And landowners, they believed planting the trees would make lots of money. But, can I continue? However, the, the trade of lumber was um, become free. And now, in, in uh, sorry, in 1970s, we have lots of in imported trees at cheap price. Then the, the late sharply dropped down, and it still remained under the 30%. That means lots of planted trees in 60s remain in a forest unused. So we make a new venture company with city government and we own the, the forest by ourselves and design the new business model, a new flow of wood in the nation using the, the design and technology. And also, this area is known for traditional kumiki. Kumiki is a technique to join woods without any uh, nails. And so we have that kind of carpenter's technique, but that, uh, tradi that technique is also fading away because young architects don't work for carpenters, of course, but they use computer instead. So they don't use this technique anymore, but we want to also keep this technique for the next generation. And we will open Fav Cafe there for the have, and also to invite lots of international designers and architects and to collaborate local carpenters and uh, learn about wood and uh, design new furniture. And also designers are visiting this space and they are making the new uh, furniture using joint wood technology. But not only wood, sometimes they uh, combine the 3D printed plastic material or they add, like this is a chair, prototype of chair. This part 
all these parts are printed material and join with uh, joint technology. So this is a new potential and or these parts are also using joint technology and user can change the size of table as you want. So, and also we want to develop the new system that will optimize the, the use of rock because please imagine the tree is round but the lumber or plate is square. So making square out of round, that means there's lots of unused parts. And actually, um, over 50% of the wood is not used. It's just, you uh, know, uh, becomes a material for, to burn. But without watching this, we couldn't imagine the uh, not straight, you know, uh, flooring board because the flooring should be straight. But this is innovation and the creativity is the power to invent this kind of potential. So how to, to get away of common sense, like a board should be straight, or that is our challenge as a designer. So this is uh, the last message for you because it's already uh, like 60 minutes past so, and I want to enter the Q&A session. But the, my question is, what is a lot of designers? And of course, we are not just uh, design the shape or the color. And one interesting story from MIT Media Lab, because I'm working for MIT Media Lab, and he's a Joey Doe and my mentor, but he did that research about education. And I think you also experienced this kind of big uh, lecture style. And of course now, somehow similar to this situation, the research is put the sensor on a person and sensor the brain, how much brain is active during a day. And as you see, this is a class and you see how flat the, the brain activity is. And you see at the homework, like something the person is really interested in, or then brain works. So if you are sleepy now, it's halfly because of my talk is boring, but halfly because of this style. But, <laughs> We think the, the class is, uh, sorry. Mm -mm -mm. But, you know, in most of universities, the classes are held like this style. And what we need to do is find the wrong style and design the new way to activate our brain or like more effective way for learning. That's what MIT Media Lab is doing, but it's not only about education, but there is so many things to be updated or to be designed in a better way. So I believe the role of designer is to seek new potential. This is uh, my favorite quote by Ai Weiwei. He said, creativity is the power to reject the past like a classroom and to, to change the status quo and to seek new potential. And that is what we need to do. So we are running loftwork.com. It's an online plot platform website. So we find the suitable designers from our database. And we have our own project management system for each project, like 
who to be assigned. And we use lots of online collaboration tools, including Slack, Basecamp, and of course, Google uh, Docs. That's how we communicate uh, with lots of outside designers. And the second question is when I made a presentation to the mayor of the city government, he said, I couldn't understand what you said <laughs> because I used lots of uh, like English in my presentation. But he said, I'm excited, even though he didn't understand what I said. And many people said it's like an international marriage because making a venture company between city government and Lotwak. So everyone says, why? But um, the abandoned forest issue is a long term issue. It's long time. So people dis allowed this issue for a long time, like more than, I think, 20 years, but no actions has happened. So instead of waiting, uh, the mayor decided, let's do it. And especially, he found some potential of database of joint wood because it may give a new potential to share the data with the global uh, architects and designers and they may visit the, the place and collaborate with local carpenters. That's why they decided, I think. But still, there is uh, some complaint, like why Tokyo-based company is coming here and get the, the best traditional Japanese house. But it's, uh, we have to show you know, uh, what we can do to the, the local society. But um, this is what I said was kind of official answer. But um, actually, when I was invited to the, the Hida city, I had no idea how to contribute to the, the village. And I was reluctant to visit the, the village because it's so far from Tokyo and I'm busy. So I said no to the, the city government several times but they invited me again and again, so I decided, okay, maybe one time I go there. But when I arrived there, I was so much attracted by the food there, actually, <laughs> because they were invited to the, the, the house. And it's not gorgeous, but traditional food in, the, in that area, and it touched my heart a lot. And suddenly I, think, I felt, I want to do something here. <laughs> and then um, visited many places next day and found a good idea. Okay, there is a kumiki, like joint of wood, and maybe 3D printer can contribute. So though the, my presentation is the beautiful story, but the reality is, Sometimes good food or good people, that is the only motivation that like a good project starts. And in that meaning, um, I feel lots of potential in Taiwan as well, because I think I have visited this country about 20 times, so many times, because I love the people of this country, and also I love the food. <laughs> Taitong, Taipei, you know, Tainan, every city has different uh, flavor and different culture. That's attract me a lot. And also my son is a big fan of Din Tai Fun. So <laughs> he wants to come with me and it has um, supportive, power for me to come to, to Taiwan, because if I get the invitation from Taiwan, or maybe my son is coming with me, so why not? And I come to Taiwan again and again. That's why we open 
cafe here, and we <laughs> open the, the business unit here. <laughs> and in that meaning, you have lots of potential. And if you want to find, uh, you have uh, some like designers or business people outside of your country, just invite them and give a good food. <laughs> Then that people, uh, those people will be a big supporter for your project. <laughs>